Good morning and welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, Old Guard March and Bravura.
Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's ceremony from left to right is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Day Kim and led by Drum Major Matthew Carmichael. Elements of the Old Guard include Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Doug Rohde, and led by First Sergeant Jason G. Elliman. Next on line is Hotel Company, commanded by Captain Joshua Akers, and led by Sergeant First Class William Camden. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation, and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Silfies. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by First Lieutenant Jake Kaplan, and led by Sergeant First Class John Robinson. Following is the Commander in Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by First Lieutenant Michael Deuce and led by Sergeant First Class Matthew LaRue. Next on line is 5 to 9th Company, commanded by Captain Michelle Sue and led by First Sergeant Antonio Crawley. The last element to your left, dressed in the Continental Musician's Uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major Ryan Mullen. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Richard A. Towner, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the hosts for today's ceremony. Major General Omar J. Jones IV, Commanding General, United States Army Military District of Washington, and Command Sergeant Major Richard A. Woodring, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Military District of Washington.
staff present all. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem.
Present the command. Detachment present Please be seated. Headquarters, Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. Colonel John S. Turner, Jr., Adjutant General Corps. Colonel Lisa A. Wiedenberg, Military Police. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jamie B. Anderson, Veterinary Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher A. Washington, Field Artillery. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Daniel N. Zaytunian, Military Intelligence. Major Albert D. LeCounta, Engineer. <laughs> Captain Efter V. Samuel, Medical Service Corps. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Frank G. Volpe, Jr., Aviation. <laughs> Ch 
Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kimberly R. Bailey, Military Police. Sergeant Major Michael I. Bear, Chaplain Corps. First Sergeant James B. Lacey, Recruiting. Master Sergeant Ronnie L. Bush. Ordinance Corps. <laughs> Master Sergeant Sanquinetta C. Lacey, recruiting. <laughs> Master Sergeant Mercedes L. Libyan, Medical Service Corps. Master Sergeant Matthew L. Sampson, Field Artillery. <laughs> Sergeant First Class Naisha J. Urbano, Quartermaster Corps. Staff Sergeant Loreen N. Pereira, Quartermaster Corps. <laughs> GS 15, Cheryl L. Sands. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors! Staff, right, face. Please be seated. Staff, ceremonial 
at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones. On behalf of the 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General James C. McConville, welcome to today's Department of the Army Retirement Ceremony. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you all for sharing this ceremony with this amazing group of Americans to our front. I wish everyone could be in person today. All the folks that are out there watching online today, I wish you could be here. These are unique times, unique times for the world, unique times for our country, and unique times for the Army. But they're also special times. And this is a special ceremony. It's special for each and every one of you. It is special for your families. And it's special for all of the soldiers and civilians you've served with over your careers. You have honored them and honored their families with your presence, whether it's here in the hall or whether it's watching online and being virtually. And thank you for that. I'd like to start my remarks today by recognizing the outstanding soldiers of the Old Guard and the U.S. Army Band Pershing Zone to your front. These great soldiers represent the professionalism, the dedication of our entire Army, over one million soldiers in uniform today, and you make this ceremony, just like everything they do, special. But today I want to talk about selfless service. It's one of the Army values, and it's something that these soldiers and civilian have represented their entire career and personified. In fact, this group of 23 retiring leaders you got to listen to the numbers here, because this is, this is pretty amazing. So 23 retiring leaders represent 584 years collectively of selfless service, and together, almost 31 years of combat experience. The selfless service they have spent the last, selfless servants, they have spent the last 20 years, and in some cases, 30 years, putting the welfare of their nation, the welfare of our army, and the welfare of their subordinates before their own. To the American public, they're simply soldiers. But to us, their family, bound together by the common mantra of duty, honor, and country. During the span of their careers, these professionals did everything their country asked and more. From fighting and deterring our enemies, to training soldiers for combat, to deploying overseas, often multiple times and they achieved remarkable success in everything they did. Families, I know you were proud of them and proud of each and every one of them, and I assure you that their soldiers, their peers, their leaders, and the entire Army shares that pride with you. Tom Brokaw coined the term the greatest generation. He was referring to the generation, the men and women who grew up during the Great Depression and then went on to fight and win the Second World War. He wrote that these men and women fought not for fame and recognition, because, but because it was the right thing to do. And like Mr. Brokaw's greatest generation, the leaders we honor today, our retirees, also self-surfacely, selflessly, not for fame or recognition, but simply because it was the right thing to do. They served and in many cases fought in places like Panama, Kuwait, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places around the world. They trained in the hills of Korea, the deserts of California, the swamps of Louisiana, and the snow-covered fields of Europe, all while sacrificing time with their families. And their service and our Army's commitment to our nation continues today as soldiers, just like this incredible group retiring today, protect all, protect all of us around the world and respond to this pandemic as it impacts our country. When you ask these soldiers why they served and why they did all that they did in uniform, they typically look down at their shoes, they won't look you in the eye, they avoid eye contact and humbly respond, I wanted to serve my country and I wanted to make a difference. And what a difference each and every one of you made over your careers. These great leaders kept our country safe 
during some extremely challenging times. And their uniforms tell their stories. The ribbons, the badges, the patches reflect their service, their skills, and their assignments over the years. And the golden stripes, the stripes you see on the lower part of their white sleeves, reflect their combat towards a duty. Their uniforms tell the story of the Army profession, of battles fought and won, of overseas missions to aid those in need, and of valor and sacrifice. But for every ribbon, every badge, every combat stripe, there's a story that's not told. The story of the families who served right alongside our soldiers, who shared in their sacrifices, provided our soldiers the support, the strength, and the courage to accomplish what our nation asked. Our families truly are the strength of our soldiers. So on behalf of our nation, I thank the families for your unwavering support to our soldiers and to our Army. Please join me in a round of applause for all Army families. Now to our soldiers and civilian retiring today, I congratulate you on a job well done. You stood guard and you maintained the eternal vigilance which has kept this country free for 245 years. I am honored to have served with each and every one of you. You have distinguished yourselves during a career of dedicated service to our nation. This is probably not what you want to hear in your retirement ceremony, but that's not over. You're professional problem solvers professional team builders, you exemplify the American spirit of just getting things done. As you enter the retiree roles, know that you are a soldier for life, and though not in uniform, I have no doubt you will continue to lead by example in your communities, and you'll continue to serve our great nation. As a retired soldier, you will continue to be a symbol for our Army and for what it means to serve. You will always be an ambassador for our Army, and I encourage you to be an advocate and to encourage America's best and brightest, America's sons and daughters, to follow your example to wear our nation's cloth. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Army leadership and on behalf of a na grateful nation, thank you for your many years of incredible service. God bless you. God bless your families. I wish you the very, very best moving forward. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song.
this concludes today's ceremony. Well done by Pershing Dome and the Old Guard. Take charge of formation. And set, follow up. And one, and two, and three. Ready, on the turn. Face! And one, and two, and three. Port, arm. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.